PCOS, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment, what you need to know. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I am a fertility doctor and I am one of the experts on PCOS. REIs are PCOS experts. So if you're coming here to learn about your PCOS, I am the person for you. You're also gonna to wanna to subscribe to the channel and follow along because this channel has lots of great information on your body, your fertility, and your hormones, and your overall health. And if you wanna get pregnant one day in the future or optimize your lifestyle to understand your health and hormones the best, this is the channel for you. You can also play a role in the community tab and help direct what videos we should do in the future. Now, PCOS is very common. One out of every eight to 10 women will have PCOS, but PCOS is often misunderstood and very frequently dismissed by OBGYNs or general practitioners. And it's not that I really wanna dismiss it, but I think the problem is that sometimes when we have the symptoms, we're so far removed from trying to get pregnant that somebody just hears the main complaint of an irregular period or acne and recommends maybe treatment or management for that without a full investigation on what PCOS is, helping you understand your disease, do you really have it, and what you need to know now and in the future. And that's the thing I see all the time from patients is they'll say, do I even have this? I don't even know. I had to research it on my own and it is so frustrating. So let's start with number one, what is PCOS? PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Essentially, it is where the brain and the ovary stop communicating appropriately. So we see abnormal pulses from the brain, which cause an abnormal response in the ovary. People with PCOS also have a really high egg count inside their ovary, and that leads to some of the hallmarks of the disease. The way I like to think about this is if we imagine the ovary, that there's a little vault inside where all your eggs are kept. When you're born, the vault is full. Throughout your life, eggs come out of the vault, and when the vault is empty, you're in menopause. Well, what we know is that the number of eggs that come out of the vault each month relate to how many are left inside. So let's think about for PCOS, suddenly the vault is very crowded and it sends out more eggs per month. Now, when that happens, your brain then is interpreting signals differently because each egg makes a little bit of estrogen and it changes how it sends out some of the hormones to get eggs to grow. Also, it is harder for an egg to respond to the normal FSH signal from the brain. So FSH is follicle stimulating hormone, a well-known hormone that works to stimulate one follicle or one egg to grow. But if you have a lot of eggs outside the vault, think about that FSH signal as getting diluted amongst all of them, and it doesn't allow for that regular and predictable ovulation pattern. And so what we see with PCOS is number one, on ultrasound, you can see PCO or polycystic ovaries. This is actually lots of small follicles and they really center on the outside of the ovary. This can be called ring of pearls. So think about it like a black pearl necklace on the outside of the ovary. Now when this happens, the inside looks really dense and that's because that's the part of the ovary that's making a lot of hormones. The ovary is a hormone making factory and estrogen is its hormone of choice. And when it can't make estrogen, that starts to shift and the pathway from LH to making testosterone starts to be increased. And so then we see an increase in testosterone. This can lead to acne, hair growth, central weight gain. So instead of you know maybe having weight on your butt and your hips, it's more around your belly button or your central abdomen area. And it can lead to insulin resistance, even in people who are skinny. So that can exist regardless of your body size. It's a brain ovary, it's a hormone problem. Now, certain things can make PCOS worse, like certainly gaining weight. Your, your fat cells can make a type of estrogen, and this can cause the brain to send out less FSH, and this can make the problem even worse. And this is why you'll see some people say losing a small amount of weight can restore that access. And that is true if you're overweight. If you're normal weight or underweight, please do not lose any weight. So for PCOS, you can see PCO ovaries on ultrasound. You can have high androgen signs either in blood work or clinically, so that hair or that acne, and you can have irregular or absent periods. And two out of the three of these are called the Rotterdam criteria. So if you come to me and you say my periods are irregular and I have acne, you have PCOS, you met the diagnostic criteria. Or if you come to me and you have irregular periods and you have a lot of follicles that we see on ultrasound, you have PCOS. So it's a 
really diverse disease as far as how you get into the diagnostic criteria because it's just two out of three. And I'll see some people upset that their doctor didn't check blood work. We're kind of trained in medicine though to not check blood work if it doesn't change your management. So if you clinically have acne and irregular periods and you meet the diagnosis, is there a need to go check your testosterone levels? I already know they're kind of elevated based on what I'm seeing. That being said, you can always advocate for yourself and ask for that blood work to be done if that's something that's important to you. So just ask away. Now, what we tend to see when it comes to blood work with PCOS is that you tend to have high androgens, so either testosterone or DHEAS from the ovaries. What we also can see is an increased LH to FSH ratio if you're checking blood work on day three or when you're having your period. We can also see a high AMH blood test. Remember, AMH is made from the follicles that are outside the vault, so more follicles, more AMH. Those things are not part of the diagnostic criteria, but we're often checking them with PCOS. And you should also tend to have, you know, your cholesterol checked because people with PCOS tend to have higher cholesterol values. Your thyroid checked because your thyroid has a higher risk of being abnormal if you have PCOS. And also, thyroid can cause abnormal periods and it can blur the lines of the diagnosis. And you want to also have your blood sugars checked or your insulin checked or your hemoglobin A1C. Depending on what your goal is, your doctor may choose one or the other or all of the above. But in some mechanism, we need to be checking what is the status of your blood sugar and is your body processing that normally. Now, your symptoms of PCOS are typically going to be irregular absent periods. It's kind of like the hallmark of it. That doesn't mean if your periods are regular, you don't have PCOS. I always think of PCOS like a teeter-totter, meaning that at some points of your life, you may actually be controlling it. And a lot of my patients with PCOS control their disease without even knowing they have it because they just feel better doing certain things, eating better foods, decreasing inflammation in their body, sleeping, low impact exercise or moderate exercise. They you know, tend towards more plant-focused diets and they shy away from processed foods and refined carbohydrates. So sometimes you are doing things to keep your hormones in check and you don't even know it and your periods may be like really good. And then if you get really stressed or you gain weight or you start eating a bunch of sugar, you might see that it switches and your periods become irregular. So not everybody has to have abnormal periods to be diagnosed with PCOS. But certainly if your periods are not regular and predictable, if you have absent periods, if you have high androgen signs, so that can be acne or hair growth. And think about, you know, if you went and lasered off the hair of your lip, I mean, you might qualify based on prior hair growth. Or if you had to take Accutane or other acne treatments, you still may qualify. And then having some of that central weight gain and some other symptoms can be difficulty losing weight and having more, you know, mood or depressive symptoms can go along with PCOS. Now, what can you do about it? Let's just go from the big ones. Number one, one of the risks of PCOS is that those small follicles can stimulate growth of the endometrial lining. And if that never shuts off with a regulated period, you're at risk for endometrial cancer. So if we talk about worst case scenarios, if you never have a period, you just have some of those small cells growing up and you could get endometrial cancer. So having a period is important, even if you're not having one normally. And so you'll see doctors very often give progesterone because progesterone can induce a period. Let's remember what happens with normal ovulation. You grow an egg, it makes estrogen, that grows the lining. You ovulate it, it becomes a corpus luteum that makes progesterone. When you're not pregnant, your progesterone drops and you have a period. So you can give somebody progesterone, which mimics that luteal phase or when you had a corpus luteum, and then you'll get a period. It protects you from endometrial cancer, it does not help you get pregnant. Meaning you take Provera or progesterone, you get a period, it's not changing what's happening at the ovary level. So it's not making the ovary ovulate. It doesn't mean you ovulate it. It's not a real luteal phase. It's just helping you not get cancer, which is important. Typically, we will recommend that you shut off that lining every three or so months if you have no periods or very long cycles. So that's a protective thing because you don't want to get cancer. A lot of times patients do get put on birth control pills and some people love it, some people hate it. It can protect you against endometrial cancer, prevent you from getting pregnant if you don't want to be, and it does lower your testosterone levels, added benefit for patients with PCOS. That's because the oral birth control pill specifically increases something called sex hormone binding globulin, which is made in the liver, and that can go bind those testosterone molecules and lower testosterone that circulates around. So you can see an improvement in acne and some of those other symptoms that can be very bothersome on the birth control pill. 
You can also use spironolactone, which is a medication to decrease testosterone production. That's another pill that can be used for acne treatment, in addition to topical medication that your dermatologist may prescribe. For hair, you can't undo hair growth, so you could start taking the birth control pill and it may prevent future hair, but you might have to go for some permanent hair removal or some type of removal technique if that symptom is bothering you. Now, if you wanna get pregnant, we really need to focus on optimizing lifestyle and you may need some ovulation injection and that is okay. Some people, no matter how perfect their lifestyle is, will need help with ovulation injection. So that's not a failure of you. But if you're trying to see if you can get your cycles in the best check as possible, some of the top takeaways. One, drop inflammation. PCOS is really sensitive to inflammation. And so what we wanna do is avoid processed foods, refined carbohydrates, and we wanna limit servings of meat. Red meat tends to be extra bad, but in anovulatory women who had more servings of meat, they were less likely to ovulate than in people who ate less servings of meat and they had other vegetable-based proteins. So I usually tell my PCOS patients, hey, maybe have meat one time per day, put vegetable protein in the other times during the day, do meatless Monday, and have red meat just one time per week at most. And then avoid processed foods and refined sugars unless it's a special occasion like a birthday and you wanna have cake. But don't make those part of your everyday occurrence. Exercise. High intensity exercise can be helpful if you need to lose weight. It, however, can stress some patients with PCOS out, so I always say listen to your body. Definitely what we know is moderate sustained cardiac activity is really good for both weight loss and for your hormones. And probably the number one thing that most people are not doing that they can improve is strength training. So add strength training that is going to help you in how you process sugars and hormones by having more muscle mass, and it's gonna help you feel better. Strength training, yoga, moderate activity. If you need to lose weight, high intensity and short bursts can be helpful but don't feel like it's a must do, especially if you feel bad afterward. That's your body telling you. Also, we wanna get appropriate amount of sleep, at least seven and a half to eight hours per night. That's when the body heals inflammation and we wanna limit exposure to other toxins. So what goes on your body? Look at your beauty products. What do you have in your kitchen? Get rid of plastics and Teflon and you know avoid toxins like cigarette smoking and marijuana. Now, if you need help getting pregnant with ovulation injection, that would be medications typically like letrozole or clomid. And I have a whole video looking at the difference in the two of them. Letrozole, which is also known as Femara, is associated with a higher live birth rate. So we really recommend that one as first line. Now, you can use that medication, they're just pills that you take, and it might restore a period by having you ovulate. Now, I like to check all other factors. Are your tubes open and is the sperm normal? before you just use medication to try to get pregnant because it'll be frustrating otherwise. I also like to monitor your cycles with ultrasound, force you to ovulate with a trigger shot and give progesterone afterward. That way I know you're responding, but some OBGYNs will give you the pills and say, just try to have intercourse or try to use ovulation tests or do a day 21 progesterone. And that's not wrong, it's just different. So you wanna know, what am I taking? How do I know if it works? What are we testing? What are we doing if it doesn't work? Are we going right up in dose? How long is this process going to take? The good thing if you're doing ultrasound monitoring is you can do a stair step protocol. So if you're not responding, I know on ultrasound, I can immediately give you that next dose. Some people will not respond even with max dose. Some things can help you respond. Metformin can sometimes improve response, sometimes steroid use, sometimes a little bit of weight loss. Sometimes those things can improve our response to oral ovulation ejection medications. You can use FSH injections, but it does carry a very high risk of multiples, especially the higher the egg count that you have. And so sometimes going on to IVF or in vitro fertilization is the safest option. The truth is, if your periods are not regular, you should see an OBGYN or a fertility doctor from the get-go. Figure out why, is it PCOS? Optimize your lifestyle the most that you can. And then if you need fertility treatments, just understand your plan. Get everything else tested. What are you looking for and how are you monitoring? I hope this video helped. I'm going to do a PCOS Q&A, so ask all your PCOS questions in the comments. If you wanna learn more about lifestyle and fertility, you can always join my Enhance Your Natural Fertility program on nataliecrawfordmd.com. As always, I have more information on the As A Woman podcast, or you can follow along on Instagram. Thanks, friends.